the Sim Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, and welcome to this week's edition of The Pit Stop, where we are here to find out what's going on across the globe in the wonderful world of sim racing. So happy Friday to everybody out there, and I hope this show kicks off a wonderful weekend for everybody out there. And uh, lots of good racing going on, and uh, a relatively slow week in the world of sim racing. There is maybe one really big story to talk about, and you've probably already heard the news. We're going to get to that in just a moment. So uh, let's get things going, because as soon as we get the show done, we can get back to work and we get back to racing. So what is happening in sim racing this week? Starting off at iRacing, uh, really the only thing, you know, they've got uh, their... their Series are now getting back underway as far as like the pro series. So almost every week we do have racing going on. We're just kind of waiting on results to come in on those. But this was a really interesting video that was posted two days ago uh, by iRacing. And it says, we need to test the new damage model on the Formula Renault 2.0. Testers? So obviously this is Long Beach. If you don't know Long Beach, uh, when it came out, or at least when they did the revamped version of Long Beach, uh, the fountain. The fountain is quite the jump, and a lot of people immediately start testing the fountain and its boundaries. Uh, anyway, check this video out here. Already has 27,000 views, by the way. <laughs> so, testing out the new damage model for the Formula Renault 2.0. You guys want to see that one again? Notice my Windows audio isn't playing. Let's work on it. All right, one more time. <laughs> That's how my race last night went. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It didn't go like that. Uh, anyway, uh, damage model. You know, that <laughs> that doesn't just look like a video game anymore. Well, it does with cars flying through the air like that, of course. But uh, damage model definitely looking pretty good. Uh, so, of course, uh, not a lot going on there. But they did have this post two days ago. Uh, sim racers want want to be in with a chance of getting showcased across our community channels. This is from Assetto Corsa Competizione. Submit your best ACC screenshots here, and you can be part of their fan art uh, competition and be perhaps recognized right here on the Assetto Corsa Twitter page. That's about all that's going on over there other than um, some community events and some racing and whatnot british we already talked about the british car pack gt pack it came out last week uh what is this why is this not happening this was oh this was supposed to be how to submit so there was a link on how to submit your art and for some reason that's not opening up where is that post here it is i believe it was this one we were trying there we go okay so uh no that isn't Um, bear with me, you guys. Um, what didn't open? No, it's the same page. Okay. Okay, so here you go. Uh, if you find that, you can go here and go to 505 Games Fan Art Submission page. Uh, let them know what game you're doing it for, what type of asset, add the file. And maybe you will be recognized by 505 and a set of course competition. Uh, Wednesday, turns out, so if you read the files, turns out Wednesday is the new daily, uh, weekly blog or competition system blog or update for R Factor 2. So also two days ago, we did have the latest, uh, what is this, like, they're calling it week seven. So the seventh week of an update on what's going on with the R Factor 2 competition uh, system, which I think the main thing here is just by the fact that they're doing weekly updates, letting us know what's going on, I think that shows you just how hard Studio 397 is working on the competition system and our Factor 2 in general. Uh, another Q&A though, so can we expect a tow system when pressing the escape button and instead of just quitting the race? That's a great question. Not related to the competition per se, but we're considering new features in this area. Uh, so that gives you an idea of, of the kind of thing. Rage quitters, they address rage quitters. So you can see a bunch of questions from a bunch of community members and the answers to those questions uh, and a few pictures to whet your appetite as well. So if you want more on that, and again, as you know, if you watch the Pit Stop regularly, you know that not only do I tell you guys all the stories, 
but I do put a link to every story in the description of the show right here on YouTube. So therefore, if you want to read the entire thing or read the whole Q&A, you can find the link to the R Factor 2 article and do so. Um, also from R Factor 2, um, oh wait, that ended today. That was the lunar sale. I thought we had a different sale that ended after. Nope, nope. So all the lunar sales are coming to an end or have already ended. So if you didn't take advantage of that, too bad. So sad. But I did tell you last Friday, uh, Dirt, Dirt 5. Uh, this was posted yesterday. New Dirt 5 content. The energy content pack comes to Dirt 5 on February 22nd with new cars, careers, events, career events, liveries, and more. So we're just three days away from the Dirt 5 update, junkyard pla playground items, new classic liveries, Italy playground area to be arena to be specific. So uh, there's also a Dirt 5 update 3.0 that will be coming along with the DLC. So on the 22nd, we're going to have an update. We do have patch notes here as well with the full list of things being addressed. So update 3.0 coming out on the 22nd. It includes that DLC, some visual fixes, some gameplay fixes, career fixes, online playground fixes, general and other. So a whole assortment of fixes and update 3.0 along with uh, that new uh, energy content pack. So three days away, that'll be what, Sunday? Sunday, I believe. Also talking patch news and patch news from Formula One, patch 1.16 is racing to the PC, the PS4, and the Xbox right now. That was four days ago, uh, and there's a full patch notes list here. So updates, updates, updates from the Codemasters titles, uh, 116. Here's some things that they've addressed in that. Looks like not a super big update. Um, Formula One news, we already got the patch notes, I already had that. And this is the big news. This is the big news of the week. Uh, we've been speculating on this for a couple months now. It's been pretty known by the sim racing community that Codemasters was shopping to sell the company. Um, anyway, and that there were a few different companies that had expressed interest and made offers. In the end, it was Electronic Arts, EA, who have purchased or acquired... Codemasters. Uh, we've, we've talked about what this could mean. We've talked about how this could be a good thing. We've talked about how this could be a bad thing. Uh, maybe it'll be a nothing. Maybe it'll be a nothing burger. Anyway, welcome to the home of racing games. Electronics Arts now owning them. Uh, this was not, this was at the Codemasters Twitter page where I found that version with the EA welcome. You've got the EA no Newsroom with the press release details. Electronic Arts and Codemasters established a new global powerhouse for racing video games and entertainment. Uh, $1.2 billion was the final price. Um, and with it are all the assets that goes along with it. So if you want to read all the details of it. it is in this press release by um, EA, and I will have the link to that. But it's all over. I mean, people are talking about it everywhere. So race fans talking about EA plans more. EA plans more racing games more often after buying F1 game maker Codemasters. Um, so there you go. What's this by... Uh, oh, it's just a Lando post of no relevance. So that is big news. Uh, it'll take a while to find out what this means. Uh, as of now, I mean, we just talked about patches, patches, patches for multiple different games. So it hasn't slowed down the Codemasters team any at this point. But uh, what will that mean for next version of their games? Will all of their games, I mean, will there be a Dirt Rally 3.0 under the direction of EA? Um... Somebody, as soon as it went through, somebody said, oh, great, so we're going to have to uh, uh, get loot boxes or, or things to, to upgrade our cars. Who knows what the ramifications of a company like EA owning a race sim house like Codemasters. I hope it means good things. I do. I do hope it means good things. 
Uh, NASCAR, this is current. This isn't part of the Lunar News, New Year sale, but NASCAR Heat is now 33% off. This deal with gold offer is only available for a limited time, so if you have gold and you want to get it, you can get NASCAR Heat for 20 bucks. it looks like. Ritza Studios, they had an update as well. This was on last Friday. I, we talked about the update. I think the update actually happened after we filmed the show. Uh, but one version 1.1.1.3 with uh, AI improvements, significant physics, and mixed weather conditions all being addressed inside of Auto Oblista 2. Look at that, another update. All of our sims getting updated. I love it. I love it. Uh, this was an interesting one. This is sort of the latest meme of uh, uh, Mars landing, I believe. Moon landing, Mars landing. I, I'm pretty sure it's Mars is the more relevant. I didn't follow the original tweet, but I've seen, of course, Bernie in the rearview mirror. Anyway, uh, landing soon in race room. And I'm not sure, is this... That's a Subaru? That looks like a Subaru to me. Uh, anyway, is this a tease or is this just a joke? I don't know, but you tell me. What do you think? Is this, uh, I don't, is the Subaru, is that a Subaru? Is the Subaru already in race room? It almost looks like a Veloster. I don't, I'm not sure. You guys help me out. You guys help me out on that one. I'll be watching the comments to find out. Uh, Gran Turismo have released their FIA Exhibition Season 2021 schedule. And we're looking at events starting with February 27th at Fuji Speedway. Single make race March 6th. So let's see, that's a week later. At Lago Maggiore in the GR3 class. March 13th, Red Bull Ring and one make. And so on. You can see the schedule there. Also coinciding with it date-wise is the Manufacturer Series as well. So there is the schedule six rounds of competition in the exhibition series nations cup and manufacturing series and that all kicks off at the end of this month and here's the schedule of how things work out and again there's a link there to this gt planet article if you want to read the whole thing or write down that schedule for your own knowledge oh uh, this is cool fanatic fanatech is hiring we have a few open roles across various disciplines are you sick of your job are you sick of your job out there and think man I want to be like those guys who just get a sim race and play in the sim racing industry all day long. Well, maybe you could be a firmware developer. Maybe you could be a project manager, research and development. Maybe you be a technical support agent or a graphic designer. If any of those are in your wheelhouse, your skill set, you might want to check out what it would be like working for Fnatic. Anyway, uh, so they are hiring. You can contact Endor is the parent company. And there's a link here to careers at endor.org. And you can go look at their job listings and send in an application. There it is. There it is. In German. I'm sure we can translate that. Here we go. Yes. So anyway, yeah, if you're sick of your job, uh, you go work for Fnatic. They are growing. They are growing and they are big and they are having a hell of a, a run right now. So, um, Trax, Traxian, 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 GG, are giving away a full Fnatic setup. Here's how to enter. So if you're interested in winning what looks like, let's see, a podium with a club sport level wheel and club sport pedals, that's a nice kit. February 24th is when they're giving it away. And you can follow that link there and go win one. Do it. Do it. Go get some free stuff. Uh, we already looked at the job. Simucube. Uh, they haven't posted much recently, but I did find this a couple days ago at their Twitter feed. And getting to know your Simucube partner, Series Part 6. This is something they've been doing. We've been co covering a couple of their partners uh, as they've done this rollout. Reseller, Racing Lounge. How many of you in Germany know Racing Lounge? So here it is, here's the actual art article, and I thought this is a really cool just to look at and get an idea of what's going on out there. Get to know your Simucube Partner Series Part 6. Our trusted network of industry professionals is enabling drivers around the globe to experience Simucube products. We're excited to tell you more about this valuable network by introducing our official partners in more detail. Simucube proudly presents Virtual Racing Lounge, one of Simucube's official resellers. So, uh, the famous virtual racing lounge. Um, 
Anyway, they have varieties of Shori, Maki, and Kyoso high-end simulators, uh, manufacturer simulators, Husingveld, Cube Control, Sparko, RC, SimiCube. They do sim racing events there. And there's uh, some of their products. And that's who SimiCube is working with. That's very cool. Cool to see. All right, Euro Truck has a couple things that they're posting. Iberia, did you hear that? Back in September last year, two of our members of our team, Mataj and Ar Arenej, sorry, I'm, I need to, uh, where's, our, where's our disclaimer? We don't have our disclaimer on our button. Oh, because this isn't the right button box. We need our disclaimer. Let's try that again. Back in September of last year, two members of our team, Mataj and Arenej, Traveled to Spain and Portugal to record new sounds. Remember, we showed shots of them recording crazy things in Spain uh, for the upcoming Iberia DLC for Euro Truck Simulator 2. Today, we are excited to showcase how these new sounds have been implemented into our sim by them and Philip Philipko, who is another one of our colleagues. Anyway, let's play a little of this. You guys, again, I have the link. You can check it out yourself. Use headphones for the best experience. Are you feeling calmer? Are you feeling just a touch more relaxed? <laughs> I am. Anyway, authentic world sounds. Oh, listen. That's like my sleep machine sound right there. All right, Euro Truck also giving us a conclusion, uh, the results of the Hauling Hope event, which they did. And uh, do we know exactly how much was hauled? Uh, number of participants, 230,000 people took part in the Hauling Hope event on Euro Truck and American Truck Simulator. In total, 705 million kilometers or 438 million miles were driven by those 230,000 drivers. Congratulations to uh, everybody involved in this. You know, just another one of those things, bringing attention to good causes kind of thing. And uh, in this case, getting spreading COVID vaccines throughout the world. So congratulations to the 230,000 virtual drivers who helped us all out a little bit. This uh, article here at Motor1.com, talking sim racing and unsung heroes, rambling about cars number six. I didn't get to watch it. This is uh, Matthew time. Today on rambling Kassara. About cars. It's time to get our game on. We're going gaming. We're talking car games, video games, <laughs> cars, <laughs> video games. They go together like peanut butter and jelly. We're going to take a little look back at, at the See what some of the stuff uh, they talk about. 90s. I, I gotta say the Volvo 850R. I just. I they had actual tracks. Pole I mean, position. this is Fuji Speedway. A actual track. So they're going way back in my time. College. Uh, oh, yeah. The laundromat the top of my down. college door. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> and so, you know, you're waiting for your underwear to dry and, like. But they're. Very... But when that was sort of. Like, can I ask you, um fast lap like there was a lot missing the compound of the type bruce me who had big hate for it 50 i'm sorry i'm just getting carried away looking for footage anyway uh talking sim racing and unsung heroes rambling about cars this is uh the video there with matthew carissa and the team behind motor one you can check it out if you're looking for entertainment uh auto evolution has an article here saying mysterious luxury sports car manufacturer coming to Forza Street. The team working on Forza Street has recently announced some of the improvements they are working on for the next update of the game. Among them, there's an addition of a new manufacturer whose name hasn't yet been disclosed. Do any of you play Microsoft Street? Forza Street? I don't. I've never tried it. Anybody else out there? I don't think it's quite most of our guys' cup of tea. Uh, more speculation on when Gran Turismo 7 is going to launch. So this is becoming one of those 
repetitive articles that we're seeing more and more of. There is no official date. Every indication has told us that it will be in 2021, but which quarter, which month, when, we do not know. Uh, in this particular article, they're also talking about that. Also, the speculation going on for Ratchet and Clank. Um, so the two games are both having the Sony or the PlayStation world like on fire. When are they coming? When are they coming? Everyone knows they are, but there's no clear date settled. So anyway, more and more, we, we covered that last week as well on the show. All right, let's talk about a few sim rigs, talk about what I got going on this weekend, and then bring this show to a close. Uh, this is posted by Natalie Decker. I just couldn't resist. It was posted in our news. It was posted on our Discord channel. If you, when I say our Discord channel, there's a huge community. Uh, several hundred people who hang out in the Sim Pit uh, Discord channel. If you ever want to be a part of that, just type in exclamation mark Discord and you can uh, head over there and, and join our crowd. But anyway, I saw this a few days ago there. Natalie Decker. Um, she's, uh, promoting her brand. I, so I guess she's working with Extreme Sim Racing. Anyway, here is a shot. Look at that. Uh, she's got a widescreen going up and down for like telemetry or chat. I'm not sure, but that's pretty badass. <laughs> that would be nice to have. Hmm. Excuse me. Do you have any gray poupon? Anyway, a little shocking to see Natalie's running on just a Logitech wheel. I mean, it's good enough. I praise the Logitech wheel, but you would think if you have enough money to put a widescreen vertically for your chat or telemetry that you probably could afford better than a Logitech wheel. No offense, not knocking it, I'm just saying. Uh, anyway, uh, there's a shot of the extreme chassis she's running and there's a shot of her with her chassis. And uh, she is, uh, let's say she's just, she's easy on the eyes. This made me smile. How proud would you be to just have this pile sitting in your game room right now? You got the giant Samsung monitor. You've got a track racer, and it looks like all the accessories to go along with it. You've got yourself some club sport pedals. I don't see what wheel... But there it is. Nope. That's the shifter. I can't... I would have my wheelbase... It's the inverted pedals right there. Where's the wheelbase? Do you guys see a wheelbase? Club Sport. Club Sport Shifter. I can only assume that somewhere in this pile is a podium. Club Sport. More Club Sport boxes? What's this one right there? Anyway, that is a beautiful setup that this gentleman, I'm assuming, uh, Sensitive Soul 37, that is his weekend work ahead. Uh, his post, motion racing simulator components have arrived, just waiting on a few more parts, time to start assembly. So he's going with motion as well. Awesome. That's quite the set. Oh, speaking of quite the set, how, how would you like this? How would you like this to be your gaming room? Uh, this is advanced sim racing, it says on the screen there. But sim racing is not an expen expensive hobby when compared to collecting Ferraris. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> can you imagine? Anybody knows car? Can you imagine the beautiful smell this room would have? All those Ferraris. It would just smell like car land. Uh, finished his first rig, and he's loving it. I love to see him using the... Uh, the A10 Warthog, isn't that what those displays, uh, those button boxes from Thrustmaster are? I, a long time ago, did a show saying that this is one of the best button box alternatives. It literally gives you like 20 buttons per panel, four rocker, 20 buttons and four rockers per panel. It lights up and you can write whatever you want on that center card there and, and like, identify what your buttons do there's no way anyone needs more than 40 buttons and eight rocker switches at beyond their steering wheel uh also interesting notice he has the monitor below the other monitor does that mean that other monitor is really high i'm known for some high monitors but that looks really high to even me that's by thailander then we got this one I couldn't even figure out what is going on so you guys got to help me another thing i need your guys' help on what sim is this? Do you guys know? 
Is that like test drive or? But watch this rig here. Check this rig out. This is posted by Curry the Chef. Actually, Phantom Ghost X is the original poster. Ah, uh, this reminds me of, uh, Escape from France, no, uh, Rendezvous in Paris, I think it was called. Anyone remember that? It was one of those, uh, oh, it was before the internet really went crazy. Uh, it was one of those videos of guys driving a, an ama I believe it was a Porsche, there were a couple of them, I think one was a Skyline, one was a Porsche. And just bombing it through Paris at like 2 in the morning. It was crazy. Uh, dangerous. Illegal. I believe people went to jail. Anyway, here's the legal version. <laughs> anyway, I thought this was really cool. Really, really cool stuff. Really fun to watch. Great uh, video by this guy, uh, Phantom Ghost X. And what else? Oh, so do you think you guys use a lot of force feedback? I'm going to say no, you don't. Not compared to this one posted by Timothy Cow. <laughs> That's what it takes to drive a modern downforce car. And <laughs> just putting some serious grunt into it, huh? All right, that takes us to the end of today's show. Uh, I'll let you know what's going on for me tonight. I've got the Simpit Arca series, the Oval League, the Simpit Oval League. We are at New Smyrna tonight at 5 o'clock. I'll probably go live if everything goes well at 5.30 or so. That'll be at Simpit Live on YouTube. So any of my live racing, for the most part, my live racing is at Simpit Live on YouTube. If it's a big event like Hot Lap Pump Day or a patron race, we'll do it here on the main channel. Uh, and if you want to watch me race personally, you go to Simpit Live on YouTube. That's where we'll be tonight with this race. And you'd find Devin Booth, our other... Uh, cast member uh, and his racing at Simpit Live on Twitch. And then on Sunday morning at 10 a.m., I'll be at Twin Ring Motegi in the Simpit GTE League. After a bad finish at Silverstone, I dropped a position. I'm back to fifth place in the points. Devin Booth nipping at my heels in sixth with Wayne Roberts. So uh, Gonzalo Perone taking a 60-point advantage over Randall White into the seventh race of the season. And in our Oval Series, it's Mark Michkowski with a 14-point lead over Nick Boyd as we head there. So that's tonight at 5 o'clock practice, probably 5.30 go live with my stream, 6 o'clock qualifying and race. And then Sunday, these times are all Pacific, 10 a.m. practice, 11 a.m. qualifying and race in the GTE series. So that's what I've got going on here. Tomorrow, uh, we will have our Simpit Patron Appreciation Practice Race. We're doubling up this month. We're going to be running the Legends cars at Phoenix Road Course Legacy. It should be pretty exciting, and I'll be streaming the race, and I get to race in that one as well. So lots going on. In addition to that, I'm reviewing the McLaren GT3 wheel rim and a few other projects going on, so you can expect more content coming here at the channel as far as reviews and other content as well. But that's going to do it for this one. Get out there, do some sim racing. You guys have yourselves a great weekend. Thanks for watching. This is The Sim Pit. I'm Sean Cole, and I'll see you on the track.